88.9 WERS. Hi, my name is Nina, and I'm here live for 88.9 WERS at Boston Calling. We're here with Bear Swinot, so hi guys. How's it going? Hey, hey, what's going on? Cool. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, I'm Paul. I play keyboards. I'm Phil. I play drums. I'm Nate. I play bass. I'm Dave. I sing and play guitar. So you guys are a local band, you're from Boston, um, and so obviously Boston Calling takes place right here downtown. What is it like playing a festival that's kind of like in your hometown area, on your turf? I mean, it's, it, we're, we're honored to be part of it, and uh, we played the Outside the Box Festival, which was back in June, mm -hmm. July, and it, we actually played like right over there, uh, but it was like super hot, so this is going to be much nicer. And Look at the train here, it's well nice. <laughs> yeah. I like that, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so you guys are kind of starting things off with dance music for people to dance to, which is exciting. But um, do you want to describe your music a bit? Because I know it's not like traditional dance or like rocky dance type of music. So I don't know who wants to describe, but. I think Paul has a good. Uh, we we kind of try to like uh, mix it up a little bit. I mean, we try to do like the live uh, um, musicianship, uh, like the, the real showmanship of like of a, that a dance act doesn't. I don't always see, or like a DJ can't do necessarily. So we like to perform dance music type of music. We try to make it a whole uh, group event. So I mean, that's that's kind of the, the mission. We try to make like, you know, good, enjoyable uh, music that you want to see live. Yeah. So how did you decide to use uh, to like actually do use keyboards and like synths and stuff like that live instead of uh, you know recording it on a laptop and having it play next to you while you play? Because there's a lot of electronic musicians who kind of resort to that now. Um, not that it's bad, but it's just a different thing having to play it every time live. Yeah, no, no laptops. We, we really decided against that pretty early on. It's kind of an easy way out. So we really tried to make um, take the elements, we, and we record in our, in our studio, and we, we record music first. We try to take it to a live setting, and so we, we strip it back, we find what we want to play live, and then we organize it that way. So we really don't start from the tracks or the, the laptop. And yeah. take the video. Um, so... Are there any musicians, either local or national, that kind of inspired you guys to pick up this sound and, and make it still like rock with dance at the same time? Uh, it's definitely like a hodgepodge of a lot of our influences when we first started. Um, I like obviously a lot of 80s stuff like Duran Duran and Talking Heads and things like that. Um, but I mean, when we first started, we were a lot more guitar driven and we started adding more synths and we kind of wanted to like refine our sound and kind of make it our own without just kind of sounding like an 80s band. Yeah. So we've really tried to work hard over the last couple of years to like put it all together and be able to kind of like stamp it with our name and make it our own sound. Um, so we've been trying to like, you know, make it summery sounding, make it want to hopefully get people outside and like listen to music outside. That's think, usually our goal. I think Chick 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 and Friendly Fires are two bands, modern bands at least, that we kind of like look up to and yeah take some influence from. Awesome. And if there are any bands that you guys would like absolutely love to open for, or those ones that you would like, or like other people? Um, I can't Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. Holy Ghost. Try yeah. Or okay. Hot Chip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so since you are a local band, you're from Boston, you know the area well, are there any like favorite spots or things you would recommend for people to do coming, touristy or not touristy? Here, you can, you can take turns, because there's a lot I of I know, that. like, some point today, I'm going to Sauce across the street to get poutine. Yeah. So I know I'm going to do that. <laughs> but that's, yeah. Uh, there's this place in Davis Square that we go to sometimes. It's called Saloon. Uh, it's like an underground, like, whiskey bar. And it's, like, just a really cool vibe all around. Awesome. I would say Great Scott to go see a show. It's definitely one of my favorite places to go see a show. And They're, that's in Austin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, or the Sinclair yeah, yeah. in Harvard Square, mm -hmm. for sure. I was going to say the Sinclair. So, okay. so. so we have venue oh, side yeah. here, food up. and drink yeah, well, side yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, awesome. We're going um, to go eat. <laughs> uh, and then one last thing is, so we're one of the non-commercial radio stations here in Boston, and we kind of take pride in playing both local acts and bigger artists too. So is there anything with radio that either growing up or as musicians that you've, you're really grateful for or glad that you know, radio's there for? I worked, at a, um, I worked at a college radio station for a while. It's really important to me too. It's a great, um, it's a great way to get, uh, find, in, find new music. And like also I met a lot of people that way and like start kind of like learning like what people care about, I guess, yeah. with, with music. And it's a cool way to kind of, yes, yeah, uh, it's a good community type building, uh, yeah. community building type. Yeah, I was going to say, the, like the whole community aspect of radio is really something that, especially if 
you're just starting out or if you've been doing music for a couple of years, you can always kind of rely on local radio to kind of help you out and at least take a listen to your track and maybe show it to some other people. So that's a big thing for us. Yeah, I was thinking about the other day that um, there was, it was like the summer after high school or college, first year like first year of college. I remember like being home and um, listening to Passion Pit like when they played like for the first time I think on the on ERS. Yeah. And so that was like they were kind of like an inspiration like early on like when we first that was like even before we started the band and so it's cool to like I don't know, see like how far they've gone and yeah. where they started. Awesome. So. Um, so do you guys have anything coming up in the future that people can look forward to? Uh, yeah, we've got um, we just put out our new single Where I'll Die um, and. We're gonna do a tour at the end of September down to Florida, and then after that, we're gonna start working on our next full length. So uh, we might be kind of underground for a little while, but um, you'll be able to catch us at a cute couple like one-off shows here and there. So, so once again, this is Nino with 88.9 WERS, and thank you, Barrister, not for a great interview. Thanks.